Hello and welcome to the sixth and final video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own piano game app in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover some background imagery, icons and build to test the game. Remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. We also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. We also find all the assets and scripts to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So up until now we have everything set, but we could do with making it look a little nicer, a little bit more useful, as we could say. So. Rather than just have the plain old boring blue, let's actually import a nice image to give some feeling and emotion to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder and we'll just call this textures. And I'm going to import into this folder a background image and an icon that we're going to use later on in this video. So drag them both in to here. And if you want, you can get these if you click the link in the pinned comment or in the description and download them for free. So how do we get this image onto here? Well, what we can do is go to game object. We can go to UI and let's go to raw image. And what we'll do now is name this background. And we're going to change the anchoring position of it. So what is anchoring? Well, it determines whereabouts on the screen an object will display whenever the screen is shrunk, increase, changes, whatever. So if we have it currently set as center like this, then no matter how big our screen is, wherever it is, this image will always appear dead center of the screen. If we click this one here, it will stretch it. So this particular square right now looks just like this. However, if we were to stretch the screen, the square wouldn't stay the same size. It would stretch in with basically with the screen. So same size. So if we pull it out and increase the size, you can see that it is there somewhere. You just can't see it right now. But the, side, the actual cube itself will increase in size. There we go. You can see it. it's changing how it looks. So it goes in retaliation with whatever the screen size is. So in order to make this a full screen behind the piano, what we need to do is set the left to zero, the top to zero, right to zero, bottom to zero. And remember earlier when we had the problem of the black sharp keys appearing in the wrong place? Well, this is the same instance with this background. We need to make sure that this background is the very first object in the canvas. So just drag and drop to the top. Next, let's drag this particular image onto this texture over here. And there we go, there's our background. And that looks pretty good, it's not bad. You can always change how it stretches if you want as well, it's entirely up to you. So you could theoretically stretch the image down like that and view it like that. But again, it's up to you. You don't even have to use this image, you could use something completely different. Now we could add a little bit of color to it and change it from the kind of blue and purple and orange feel. So if we click this color button here, like we did with the black keys earlier, you could change it to green and give it a real kind of dusky, greeny, nighttime, maybe even some aurora feels there, you know. But it's, again, it's up to you. I just feel like having something like this adds some character to an app. So. Yep, that'll do just fine for now. So what can we do now? Well, we need to adjust some of the game settings themselves before we can build it to test it. If we go to edit, and if we go down to project settings, you'll be presented with plenty of different options. And really, we don't need to worry about too much of them. These cover all sorts of different things within the game itself. What we want to look for first is the player section. And no, this doesn't refer to the player as in a first person player or a third person player. This refers to the actual player that the game is playing in, the standalone executable file. So we can call this default company. Well, let's change that to JV, me. Uh, product name, we'll keep as Piano App. We'll keep the version as 1.0. I guess you could change it to 1.1 or 2.0 if you wanted. Uh, but let's select a default icon. So let's click on select and let's select that piano icon that we imported earlier. 
You can cover a couple of different settings here if you want to, depending on what you're building for. But for all intents and purposes, these don't really matter. We're building a simple piano app here, aren't we? So how do we make it so as we can physically test this in an executable? Well, once we have our name set up here and a nice little icon, we can close that. And if you remember a while ago, we went to file, build settings, and we explored what we could do here. Well, firstly, I want to do this for Windows because I want to test it for Windows to make sure it all works. So make sure this is selected with the little Unity icon there, and let's click on Build and Run. It'll prompt you what you want to save it as. So I'm going to create a new folder and call this Piano Test. It's up to you what you want to call it. And then select Folder. And then it'll say, do we want to make changes to the scene? Yes, of course we do, because the changes we made were the ground image that we put in. So all this will do now is it will compile everything that we've created up until this point, and it will put it in an executable file that we could run anywhere, anyhow. So if there is, for example, it could be a full game that you've created and you're building it right now, that is exactly the same process as it will do for that. Now, because this is going to be a fairly small app, I'm hoping this is not going to take too long to build. Uh, if you're on a slower machine, it might take longer. If you've got a very complicated project, it'll take longer. But as I said, this is a very, very uh, small app, so it shouldn't take too long. And there we go, it's done just as I finished talking. So now what it will do is it will run that app straight up for us. So we should be able to play it on screen as soon as this is done. Just need to give it a second. There we go. So it's, it's doing the last little bit now. When you see it running, you know, building, player, you know that it's pretty much done. Okay, and there we go. So now what we should see is the game pop up. There we go, made with Unity. And there we go. So let's, let's click, let's. Excellent, it works. And let's try the keyboard. Perfect, and let's try the button up here. I really hope I don't get copyrighted with that because that's uh, that would not be nice. But either way, our build works. And as I've mentioned earlier, these buttons all function just fine. If they work right now, they will work on touchscreen, no problem. So you could theoretically build it for your Android device, iOS device, tablet, whatever. Uh, so let's Alt F4 to close that and head back into Unity. And the last thing we're going to do, and I can't really build it per se, but we can go to, let's say, Android. And the final thing is, let's switch platform. And it'll do this thing again where it'll go through everything. And what will effectively happen is it will switch everything on its platform to being a focus for an Android device. And it's the same with anything. If you wanted to go back to Windows, you would just select the Windows and switch platform once again. Worth noting that the bigger your project, the longer it will take to switch platform. The smaller your project, then obviously the less time it will take to switch platform. Because this is a very small app, it should take less than a minute to switch platform. But if you've created a massive intricate game, it will take much longer to switch platform because there's more stuff to do. So effectively, that's pretty much all there is to this series. We've created our piano, we've tested it, we've built it, we know it works. The last thing you would need to do is switch platform to Android, like we're doing here, and build and run. And there you go, you're good to go. Same with iOS, if you are doing this on a Mac and you're building for iOS. So I hope that entire thing was educational for you. I hope that you've learned something new. Uh, and I do hope that you will show me your results because I would love to see what you have created from this piano app. Uh, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I do upload on this channel because I'm always uploading new content, new videos, new ideas, new things to learn. And hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Take care.